Now, a few months back, I reviewed the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7 Pro. It's a 14-inch laptop running the AMD Ryzen 5000 series processor, integrated Radeon graphics. It had a 2.8K display. Absolutely blew my mind. I loved it. Check out the link below for videos on that. You don't want to miss it. Now, I just took delivery of the Intel counterpart. I took delivery of the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro. It's running the Intel Core i7-11370H processor, integrated Iris Xe graphics, but on top of that, it has the NVIDIA GeForce MX450 GPU with two gigabytes of video RAM. So I'm gonna check it out to see how this all comes together, to see what the differences are with its AMD counterpart, to see if this is also a winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro, the 14-inch laptop here for 2021. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Lenovo, I'm not being sponsored by Lenovo, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Lenovo is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this is not yet available in the US, but I am hearing from my source that Costco will be carrying a variant of this. So stay tuned as soon as I get more information on that. I will leave a link in the description below. For those in the UK, you can actually pick it up right now with a starting price of 849 pounds. I'll leave a link in the description below for that one as well. So stay tuned. I'll talk more about availability as it becomes more concrete. And as many of you already know, I've already reviewed the AMD variant a few months back. For those that didn't see it, I'll leave a link in the description below. I have a number of videos that I did on it, as well as some live streams, and they proved very popular as it is an excellent variant of the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro. I actually love the AMD variant, but I'm curious to see what this Intel model has to offer. Let's check it out. Now the specs on this one are pretty interesting. You get a Core i7-11370H processor, an 11th gen Tiger Lake processor from Intel, 16 gigabytes of soldered RAM, it's not upgradable, but you also get the NVIDIA GeForce MX450 GPU, and it's the 25 watt variant. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. You get a 95 watt USB-C power adapter. I think it's pretty compact and I think they give you that 95 watt adapter because this does have that discrete GPU, the MX450. And holding the unit for the first time, I gotta say I'm very impressed with this all metal build. It's an aluminum build and it feels very high end, very premium, just like the AMD variant we already took a look at. And at 1.3 kilograms or 2.87 pounds, this is very portable, easy to take with you on the go. And here it is next to the AMD variant. And as you can see the different colors, that's the storm gray versus this cloud silver or cloud gray. I kind of like them both, but you see less fingerprints obviously on the lighter color. I'm curious to know what you think about the difference between the two in terms of the looks. Let me know in the comment section below. But for the most part, these are virtually identical in terms of the exterior. The changes are different obviously under the hood. There are the differences there. Okay, let's check out the port selection. We're gonna start off on the left side where you get two Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now these are full service ports, meaning you can do data charge and display out. The big benefit of Thunderbolt ports, of course, is the connection to multiple 4K monitors, an 8K monitor, or even external GPUs, Thunderbolt docks, stuff like that. Gives you a lot of versatility as far as these ports are concerned. Moving over to the right side is your power button, a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type A port, and finally your 3.5 millimeter headset jack. And notably missing is an SD card reader. Okay, let's talk about the internals and user upgradability. And the good news is, is that Lenovo makes it pretty easy to get inside this laptop. All you need to do is remove the T5 Torx screws, pop off the bottom plate, and you're in. It's that simple. Now, once inside, you'll notice the two fans for cooling, the heat sinks employed here. We'll talk about the thermals, the fan noise, and of course, surface temperatures later on in this video. Now, while we're inside, you'll notice that it has a 61 watt hour battery. We'll get into the battery life and charging times also later on in this review. 
But as far as what's user upgradable, the SSD is user upgradable, although the one they give you with this laptop does give you some very good reads and writes, as you can see from these results. Now, unfortunately, the RAM is soldered into the motherboard. That means you cannot upgrade it yourself down the road. Now, my review unit has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM, and it is running in dual channel mode. And it has Wi-Fi 6 along with Bluetooth 5.1. Both are working very well. Now, this is slotted in. That means you can upgrade it down the road if you have to, which is always a nice option to have. Now, for those wondering, no, you cannot open this laptop up with one finger. You'll have to use two hands. The hinges are just not designed that way. But the hinges are pretty good in terms of sturdiness, not too much screen wobble when that is good. Now, once inside, you'll notice that the keyboard has those familiar smile-shaped keys we've come to know from Lenovo. And I found that typing on it was pretty comfortable, especially for extended periods of time. Good tactile feedback, decent key travel, a bit on the shallow side, of course. And I noticed that it does have a nice backlight on it which allows you to get worked on in a dark room or in a dimly lit environment so that's a really nice option to have obviously if you want to get work done and it has a glass precision touchpad that i thought was super responsive two finger scrolling was buttery smooth and all the gestures work as you'd expect good job on that front But to me, the star of the show has to be its display. And what we have here is a 14-inch 2.8K display with a resolution of 2880 by 1800. And yes, that means it has a 16 to 10 aspect ratio. Now, this is an IPS display with a 90 hertz refresh rate. So what does that mean? Smooth scrolling when it comes to gaming, when it comes to navigating through the OS, it'll seem very smooth, very fluid. It has really deep blacks, good white points, excellent contrast, and it also has a pretty low Delta E score of 1.21, making it a very color accurate display. And it also covers the color gamut pretty well, 100% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, 80% of the DCI P3 wide color gamut, and 73% NTSC, making this a pretty good choice for content creators who do Lightroom, Photoshop, color grading, and of course, video editing. And I love the fact that it has really thin bezels, giving a very sleek and modern look. But one thing of note, this is a glossy display. That means you're going to see some glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions. Something to keep in mind. So this is the front-facing camera on the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro, the 14-inch laptop here for 2021. 720p, 30 frames per second webcam, infrared webcam. That means you can log in with face recognition, with Windows Hello. There is no fingerprint scanner for those wondering. What do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality of the internal mics? I am curious to know. And as I mentioned earlier, this has a 61 watt hour battery and it did a very impressive 12 hours and 24 minutes on my continuous web surfing test over Wi-Fi at 150 nits, outlasting the AMD model in this category, which was very impressive. Now, if you do need to plug in, it has a very fast charger. It's a 95 watt USB-C charger that takes less than 90 minutes for a full charge. In fact, looking more towards 80 to 85 minutes. That's pretty fast. And when it comes to performance, the Core i7 11370H processor is actually performing pretty well, as you can see from the numbers, especially when you compare it to the AMD variant that I took a look at a few months back. This is very capable in terms of an everyday machine to do things such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, all handled with ease. Very nicely done indeed. Now, this has 16 gigabytes of LP DDR4X RAM running in dual channel mode. It also has the integrated Iris XE graphics, but on top of that, it has a discrete GPU, the MX450, and it's the 25 watt variant. So that's gonna give you a little bit of a boost in terms of the graphics. So things like video editing, Photoshop are very capable on this machine. Now, as far as gaming is concerned, as you can see from these numbers, running it on the low settings gives you very playable frame rates, higher settings, not so much, but it just depends on the titles you choose. But either way, you're getting playable frame rates with this CPU GPU combination. And when I ran my Prime 95 stress test to really put it under maximum load to see how the thermals would handle, it would CPU turbo boost up to 4.791 gigahertz. That would last for a good five minutes till it reaches a core temperature of 99 degrees Celsius. And then it would throttle down to about 1.27 to 1.47 gigahertz to maintain a much cooler temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. 
Now, the fact that it throttles down doesn't surprise me due to the thin nature of this laptop. So there has to be a place for where the heat dissipates. And that's why it doesn't get very hot in terms of the surface temperatures with the highest point being by the middle of the keyboard, as you see here. And when it comes to the fan noise, I noticed that it was a much more quiet experience than you'd say with a gaming laptop, which is not to be unexpected. And the two fans do ramp up. You will notice them again, not too loud, which is actually pretty good, especially if you want to get work done. And while we're inside, you'll notice that it has two downward facing speakers. Now these are Dolby Atmos speakers. They're two watts each, which produce pretty good sound filling up a room rather nicely. Decent volume, good mids, decent bass. I gotta say they did a good job when it comes to the audio. All right, let's bring it on home. What do I think about the Lenovo Yoga Slim 7i Pro here for 2021? And I gotta say, I'm super impressed. I like its bright, sharp 2.8K display. I like that sleek design on it. It's thin, it's light, it's portable, but it also packs a little bit of power under the hood thanks to that Core i7 11370H processor paired with that MX450 GPU. I like that comfortable backlit keyboard. I like the fact that it has two Thunderbolt 4 ports, the very responsive touch pad upgradable ssd and wi-fi is always great it's quiet under heavy load doesn't get overly loud in terms of the fan noise good audio from those dolby atmos speakers that's really impressive and it also has very impressive battery life lasting all day and then some now the negatives here no sd card reader 720p webcam and soldered ram none of those are real deal breakers especially because you're getting this at a very decent price i'll let you know when this is available in the u.s i'm hearing that it will be at costco once i have some concrete information i will let everybody know and leave a link in the description below but there are no real deal breakers here ladies and gentlemen this is a winner i'm going to give this my editor's choice for the 14 inch laptop category here for 2021 or at least so far for 2021 definitely making it worth your money So what do you think about this bad boy, the Yoga Slim 7i Pro? I'm loving this Intel variant. Love the fact that it has the dedicated GPU, the MX450. Gives you a little bit of a boost in terms of performance. 61 watt hour battery gives you that all day battery life. I did 12 hours and 24 minutes on my continuous web surfing test. This is a great all metal design, thin, light. You could take it anywhere with you, throw it in your bag. Doesn't bring up too much weight or heft. And that's actually really good. Now, as far as availability here in the US, my source tells me it's coming to Costco. So my source is pretty reliable, so you can bet on it. I will let everybody know once it is available by leaving a link in the description below. But if you're in the UK, you can pick it up right now. It's 879 euros. And to me, that is a steal because you're getting a premium device with a high-end display, the 90 Hertz refresh rate. I don't wanna to fail to mention that here in the closing minutes of this video. Definitely worth it, especially if you do gaming, if you want that smooth scrolling, that 90 hertz refresh rate makes a difference. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.